The four corners of the earth we are preached God's word in various places. And from in the darkest night right to the daylight we give praises. So we give praises. Now on everyday topics when you know we come for shine some light using godly principles. Yes, that's right. On the straight and the narrow path, that's where we go. Welcome to the daylight show. Welcome back to the Daylight Show with yours truly, Crystal Day. And I am so excited that you are joining us for this week. I have a, a riveting topic. I believe it's very passionate to my heart that I'm looking forward to talk about. Now, remember, the mission of Daylight Show is that we want to shine light on everyday topics using biblical principles. And this means that there are topics that we'll talk about on the show that people don't want to hear about, people don't want to talk about. And what I found, even especially a topic that I'm talking about today, is that there are many opinions. And I'm going to give you a little story <laughs> about me, why, you know, this topic just came to mind. But before that, I want to introduce you to my guest for this week. And she's flying all the way from Atlanta, right? Georgia, right? And I, I'm looking forward to know more about her, but hearing how, you know, God would have been using her in this field, but also just the calling that he has on his life, on her life. So with that being said, I want to welcome Brittany Perry to the Daylight Show. Welcome, Brittany. Thank you for having me. Ah, listen. So just tell them a little bit about yourself. But again, what is the topic for this week? Should Christians participate and invest in life coaching? Yes, we're talking about life coaching this year, today, because again, it's very passionate to me because I felt like God had called me into life coaching for me, life coaching is not just a career, it's actually a calling from God. And when I started in the coaching field, I was severely attacked. Like I was told, Brittany, that I was new age. There is a video on YouTube with my picture saying that, yeah, that life coaching and Christian life coaching is not a thing. And, you know, it's a new age practice. And I got a lot of attacks. And what's interesting is that all of those persons that I saw that were attacking me are now life coaches themselves. So I'm wondering if God changed his mind <laughs> or, you know, is God doing a new thing? So with that being said, and that's the topic for this week, I want you to tell them a little bit about you first and before we dive into the topic. Sure. Well, my name is Brittany Briscoe Perry. Um, as Crystal stated, um, I am from Georgia in America, um, and I am a certified and practicing school counselor. So I work with young people as well as a certified life coach. Um, and I'm also an executive director of a business, a black business coalition um, in central Georgia as well. No, I love it. So here's the thing, Brittany, because um, I'm sure when I was talking about me being attacked as a life coach, you're like, what? <laughs> right. But I want you to tell us a little bit about your experience as a counselor first, because what you find is that, you know, schools are used to having guidance counselors. Mm -hmm. And now with the era, therapy is becoming a little bit more you know, acceptable. So you find that counseling therapy is not really considered a bad thing in the Christian space. So tell us a little bit about your experience as a counselor. So um, counseling and therapy is still taboo, a taboo subject in a lot of households and a lot of families and cultures. Um, however, you know, we know it's necessary. And so as a school counselor, you know, you can only go so far. You can only um, encourage parents to get their children counseling or whatever the case may be. And so but you still have people who are against that. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's when coaching comes in as because it's another lane as the way you can still serve the person, still serve the family. We're not stepping over and crossing boundaries that they're uncomfortable with at the moment. OK, and here's why. So when I also have. Uh, Christian life coaching training. So in the last five years, I've certified over 200 Christian life coaches because once I became a coach, I know that I knew that God wanted me to, to, to help others to do the same. Right. Now, when I'm teaching, I'm always saying, okay, therapy is mostly around the past and you, you know, dealing with persons and the past and healing, etc. But then when you think about coaching, coaching is about growing. Mm -hmm. It's not about the past. It's not about while you tap into that really and truly, coaching is about helping persons seeing the future and preparing them for the future. So tell us, how did you get into 
the coaching aspect to the point of now getting a certified, becoming a certified coach. Right. So I actually started with coaching before I started with counseling. Wow. And so um, with coaching, it was something that I was naturally doing my entire life, basically. Yes. So even, you know, with people, you know, my cousins, just family members, whoever, friends who were even older than me, I found myself um, being a coach for them mm -hmm. um, with a lot of different things because of the experience that I have had in life. And because things, when you, when you um, have those experiences, you glean the wisdom from it. Yes. And then you have a heart of service. So you want to serve and help other people. And so that's how I got into coaching. But then when it came down to working with young people, I recognized that, you know, as I was teaching, I was a teacher at one point, I recognized that counseling was a better lane for me because that's what the students were naturally coming to me for. Mm -hmm. And so then I went to go get the training to be a counselor. And so I could operate in multiple lanes and help multiple people um, based on where they are and what they need. I agree. And one of the things you said a while ago is that it's just a different lane. Mm -hmm. And I tell people counseling is just a different discipline from coaching, mm -hmm. from teaching, from, you know, all of these things, just a separate discipline. Mm -hmm. Why would you think, though, that the Christian space is especially, I mean, I see that they're warming up to it a little bit more now, but why do you think they attacked, especially the coaching industry so much? So I think a, a, a couple of reasons. Um, one is it's natural that people attack what they don't understand. Um, that's the thing that happens. Um, and then secondly is because a lot of times in Christianity, um, we over spiritualize everything. Mm. And so if it's not spiritual, it's something wrong with it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like I said, when you don't understand it, you can't put your finger on it. You can't control it. Um, it's something that is outside of your arena, your area of expertise. Mm -hmm. People want to attack it. Yeah. And so that's that's the main reasons I see that people, you know, maybe attacking life coaching <laughs> <laughs> you know and uh, we agree we do agree that there have been people especially internationally that have tapped into coaching and using it for you know different religious things mm -hmm. you know i've seen it online you know the witchcraft you know witches and warlocks you know these people are saying oh you know it's come to me and i will throw a card and mm -hmm. all of these things so i do understand why there can be some level of okay this is me. Mm -hmm. Let me, you know, take a little step. But for somebody, I want you to, for somebody that's listening and they don't know if they're called to life coaching, are there three ways that you can say, you know, like how you said, you have been doing this all your life and mm -hmm. you didn't realize until you got <laughs> certified. Right. So, you know, tell us three things you think persons can definitely say, hmm, if, if I want to go into coaching, this, this is who I need to be or, you know, this is a way that I can identify that I'm called to be a coach. Right. So, okay, three things. I would say, first of all, you will feel that pool, number one. So you need to pray about it and ask God and have him to reveal it to you whether or not mm, this is something that yes. I should be doing. Um, because, you know, people always say, I need to protect my peace, but your peace will protect you. So when you're Ooh. at peace with... A, a, a decision to go into a career or whatever the case may be, that's one of the signs that this may be somewhere I need to be, yes. um, the direction I need to go in. Secondly, I will say, um, like, like I spoke on earlier, what do you naturally do well? Um, as, do people come to you for advice? Do people come to you for guidance? Do people come to you for coaching? Um, and so when you recognize that this is what's happening, you might want to take a, a closer look at that. And thirdly, I would say, um, go out and get some education in that field yes, yes, in yes, some kind of way, whether yes. it's a conference, a class or yes. whatever, and it will further confirm to you or deny whether or not this is something that you actually want to do. That is so good. Guys, are you listening? <laughs> you need to seek the Lord, look at your personal gifts, and then, of course, you know, the Bible says, study, study to show thyself approved. So I know because coaching is not a regulated industry, Persons are just coming up. Oh, I'm a coach. You know, today they're just at it. <laughs> and one I, of one I the things about that is that, you know, there are people coming in. And I've had this experience where I paid people to coach me and they come as a motivational speaker. So they spend the whole time just motivating me and telling me their story. And I'm like, but that's not, that's not what I paid for. That's not what I paid for. <laughs> so tell somebody, what would you say is coaching? Because I think we've been talking. What is coaching really? All right, coaching, um, first of all, you're, you're looking for an actual result. 
there's something that's supposed to come at the end of this. This is not Ooh. just us having a conversation and, you know, and us, you know, just laughing and having fun or whatever the case may be. But I should get some kind of revelation, some kind of wisdom, some kind of an action plan. Yes. Something yes. should come yes. after this coaching session or whatever the yes. case may be. So that that is primary. So coaching is action driven. It's vision driven. It's it's future driven. Anything else you wanted to add? No, that, I mean, I feel like you really sum it up, <laughs> but just in case. So we're going on our first break, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. We want you to be thinking about coaching and the conversation because it's just one of the things that people are just attacking right now. And when I teach persons, I've seen where they're like, oh, you know, Christians, only God alone can be your life coach. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like holy God, and I'm like, yeah, God is the ultimate life coach because right. when you go into that spirit and say, God, give me a plan, He's gonna give you an action plan. Right. But most of the time, we get stuck in the disobedience and don't want mm -hmm. to take a plan. So God is the ultimate life coach. But at the end of the day, then you're saying what the Word says about all of us, really and truly, you know, being a, a blessing to others. Mm -hmm. You know, each of us given gifts. You're saying that God given didn't give us a gift. And I want you to really challenge that aspect of it. But Brittany, you didn't tell us what kind of coach you are. And, you know, how have you not, you, let us talk about how have you seen coaching help your students first? Right. So I'm a life and confidence coach. Um, and so I decided to be a confidence coach because I recognize the importance of confidence. Yeah. So you can have knowledge, you can have um, understanding or yes, whatever the case may be, but if yes. you're not confident enough to communicate that to other people, um, it can pre present a problem for you in life. Yes. Um, a lot of people have messages, they have things they want to get out to the world and to help other people, but they're so afraid and they're yes. so um, stuck that they can't um, get that message out to people. Yes. And so, when, especially when I'm working with my young people, um, it is amazing to me to see how much they're able to accomplish and things they're able to overcome uh, once they recognize who they are and they're able to stand in that yes. every single day and show up in a way that will help them, that will help them to um, affect other people the way that they need to. I agree. Wow. Wow. And I, I appreciate where you, where you started you know you can have all the knowledge in the world you can know many things but you know one of the things i say is that knowledge is not power because we know many things applied knowledge is power and this is where coaching for me like coaching is so such a life transformational thing mm -hmm. because it really takes you from the idea of you know this is an idea to how am i going to execute mm -hmm. this idea so i want to just touch one what is coaching? Again, coaching is simply the practice of taking somebody from one place to another. And I tell people in my coaching training, Christian life coaching is God taking you from where you are to where he desires you to be. And most time God uses his vessels, mm -hmm. right? When you think about Brittany and I, he uses his vessels to now take you from a place of where you are to where you desire to be. Now, do you need a life coach to do that? No, of course not, right? Just like how some persons send their kids to school, there are persons that homeschool. Is one better than the other? No, it's just a different part that God will have you on. Um, I want to also tackle the part about discipleship because persons are like, hey, you know, um, more Christians need to be discipled. And I totally, totally agree. But remember, discipleship has to do with the growth, growing in a spiritual walk. It's somebody that is more mature coming alongside you and saying, hey, this is how the principles of Christianity works and this is where you want to go. Now, I do also believe that there is a place where co Christian coaching can come into place to help persons to grow spiritually. Mm -hmm. Because again, so many Christians know things. They know the Bible. They know you must walk by faith. You know many things, but they, they are not how. doing and they don't, they don't know, know how. how. So... As we're about to go on our first break, I want you to really think about the conversation we're having. And if you are not into coaching, you might say, oh, I'm tempted to click off and not watch the rest of this. But I don't want you to because here's the thing. If somebody told me 10 years ago I'll be doing this, <laughs> you'll be like, what? Coaching? What? 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 We don't 
know that, especially because I'm in the Caribbean, at least in the US, it's a little bit more common. Right. Like, I, Britain, when I started, there's no Jamaican that call himself a Christian coach. And at that time, I only met about two or three persons, and they were like John Maxwell coaches, mm. or, you know, really, yeah, John Maxwell coaches. Mm. But anybody as are like, where's this girl coming with this Christian thing? You know, that's not of God. It's not in the Bible, right? But I tell people all the time that not because something is not explicit in the Bible it doesn't mean that the practices are not there. Mm -hmm. So as we go on our break, I want you to really just think about what we're saying um, because I do believe that just like how God is using therapy and counseling in the body of Christ right now to grow believers, just like how discipleship exists so that churches are able to have more sturdy Christians and solid right, Christians, just like how we have mentors, right? There is a place for coaching that God is using um, to raise us as people in. So when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more. So today, book of the week, guess what the book of the week is? Tune in and see. And I want you to go on Amazon, Kindle, Barnes & Noble, wherever books are found, to go and purchase your copy of this week's book of the week. We'll see you in a few. Welcome back to the Daylight Show with yours truly, Crystal Day. I hope that you have been really convicted. <laughs> yeah, probably convicted is a strong word. But I want you to be a little bit empowered or encouraged by this conversation. Some of you are watching again. Christian life coaching has nothing to do with you. But does it really? Because some of you are not tapping into your potential because you have not worked as a coach. And <laughs> that is the reality. Now, you have coaches in every area. You have the health coach. I started in... Um, comfort, well, I started as a purpose life coach and then I quickly knew that I wanted to actually train persons to become a coach and also I wanted to do book coaching and business. So I quickly transitioned after life coaching <laughs> to get into the book brand and business. That's what I do. And through my coaching program, I do my book coaching. I actually do coaching sessions because for me, the most important aspect of you is that self discovery process. And Becoming a coach or working with a coach allow you to do that. You get to tap into your gifts and your talents and, you know, you're able to, to realize how oh, much that is in you that you are settling for. And that is why I love coaching. So we're going to go back to just Brittany telling us a little bit. I want to touch a little bit on the imposter syndrome, right? Because I do know that there are people that are listening that they feel like God is calling them to do more, mm -hmm. to be more, but they feel like I cannot or I shouldn't. I'm not deserving. I'm not good enough. Or, you know, so they have this feeling of imposter. I shouldn't mm -hmm. do it. Any tips? Tell me, you know, just your experience of what you have seen working with women. You know, what has been their biggest hindrances to walking out God's plan for their life and the three tips? Right. So... First thing is you need to know who you are. Mm. And so like he was talking about self-discovery, you need, and if you talk about from a Christian perspective, that means you need to know what God says about you. Ooh. You need to know what the promises of God um, are for your life. Ooh. And so that's first and foremost. So you wow. know who you are and that's how you can walk in that. And secondly, you need to gain more knowledge, more understanding um, as it relates to um, what it is, whatever area or whatever you're, you're working towards. The more you know, the more confident you can be when you speak to people, when you when you um, go to conferences or when you're meeting other people, when you have more knowledge and understanding, yes. you're more confident in that. Um, the last thing I would say is stop listening to people who are obsessed with humbling you. People who well, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> like we have, we have to just stop and accept some offering for that one. <laughs> but continue. Go, repeat that one just for the, the people in the back. Stop listening to people who are obsessed with humbling you. Because wow. there are people in your family or in your community, there are people who don't even know you, who just want you to remember everything you used to be, everything you used to do, and everything that you they think you are not, or that everything you can't be. And when you have people in your ear dropping those seats all the time, it affects your confidence. It affects your imposter syndrome wow. 
Wow. Like, like, Britain is just, you know, like, because I'm thinking, and I was saying to you earlier, like, if I think about 10 years ago where I'm at, I knew persons that would say, this is not possible for somebody like mm -hmm. Crystal. From where she is coming from, mm -hmm. from who she is, who mm -hmm. she's supposed to be, she, that. She she has her own talk show. <laughs> like that's not possible, you know. <laughs> and you're right. Um, a lot of us stay in this false humility. Oh, you know, I'm just gentle, Jesus Mika, you mm -hmm. know. Because not because we don't think that God has called us for more, because we're listening to the voices of those who mm -hmm. feels like they are protecting us mm -hmm. by humbling us. Right. Wow. Don't forget where you came from. Wow. You know all those types of those little things, those wow. little subtle statements. You know, you have to, when you're, you have to be in tune, like I said, with what God says about you. If you're rich, you're going to switch. That's right. a big one. You right. know, if you get rich, you know, you're going <laughs> like, you know. Right. But it's like, but how can we, how can we help God expand the kingdom in the earth if we don't have any money? We don't have the, the funds to, to do the work, to get the things done. Like, it has to be done. Oh, yeah. So, I, I don't think we plan to go there, but we're going to go there because <laughs> with Coaching, uh, I do believe that you can use a coaching certification, not just as a business, but we're going to come. I believe becoming a coach, one, will help many churches to help their congregants to not to, to go on this self-discovery process, but to tap into their gifts and tap into their talents, etc. So I do believe that just naturally, you learning coaching will help you to become a better discipler. It helps you to become a better teacher. It helps you to become a better counselor. And it helps you to become a better mentor. So if you see calling to anything like that, I do believe that you can utilize the coaching skills because with coaching is a skill. Mm -hmm. Like you learn, it's not just about going in front of somebody and talking and talking and talking. Or, you know, coaching is actually about listening, asking powerful questions, the intuition, the actions the affirmation, so it's a big thing. No, with that though, I also believe that coaching will help you professionally. So more organizations you find in the US are actual, actually um, investing in life coaching, coming into the organization so that it can build staff morale. But of course, my favorite part of coaching is to launch a coaching business or to use coaching as a way to create another stream of income. So tell us about your experience about, you know, being an entrepreneur, um, you know, launching a coaching business. What are the struggles? You know, what are the best aspects of it? So I would say one of the main struggles with launching a coaching business is the imposter syndrome, mm. recognizing that. I actually do have value to bring to yes. people's lives. Yes. Um, and it doesn't have to be value on a massive scale as to where I'm taking someone from zero to a million dollars a year, mm -hmm. you know, the first time I coach them. But understanding that value is value. And people uh, will people will reflect that back to you to say, this is the value that you have brought to my yes. life. And so, uh, but I will say that the other thing is making sure that the substance is there as it relates to launching a coaching business. Because a lot of times with not just coaching, with just businesses in general, we are so focused on the aesthetic, making it look good, making the logo look great and making the website look great. But once someone buys into you, once they pay you, what value are you actually bringing them? What is the substance? Is this wow. something that I can just go to YouTube and get for yes. free or, or am I going to be I'm glad that I paid you to yes. coach me. Yes. And so um, that's what I would say. The main thing is when it comes to coaching, because the, the people will come, the money will come, that will happen. You can have, you can get a business coach yourself to, to help you bring in more money or to set up your systems. But the substance, you have to go and develop that. You have to make sure that you're attending conferences, you're going to classes, Enjoy you're it. continuing to learn and grow. And so that you can continue to help people um, with your coaching. Listen. We can't just end the show right here because she just kind of gave me a blueprint <laughs> of launching a coaching business. I could not have said it better, you know, because most, again, I have certified over 200 life coaches. And I can tell you probably less than 50 has mm -hmm. actually gone out and continuously using their certification. Mm -hmm. And when I go back, you know, to the, those who started, I'm like, why? It's like, I don't think anybody will pay me for this. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm good enough. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, one, 
God called you to this. Because mm-hmm. anybody that works with me, the first thing I'm like, do you feel like you have to write an essay? Like, mm-hmm. you know, why you feel like you're called to this? Mm-hmm. And then they say, God called me to this. If God called you to it, then yes, I know that you struggle with some fear, but he has not given you that power. So get the help mm-hmm. that you need. And one of the things I find interesting is that so many coaches are afraid to invest in coaching. <laughs> and that's the crazy part. That's, 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 that is the issue is you don't think no one will pay you for what you do because you won't pay anybody else. And so, you know, you have to go and invest in that. You can't expect someone to pay you a thousand dollars for something that you will never pay a thousand dollars for, or you have never paid a thousand dollars for. Um, and then also my, the other piece is ask yourself, would I pay me for this? Ooh. Ooh. Would I pay me for this? <laughs> And if not, that's, that's the problem. Go out and get more knowledge and get more understanding. Learn, hone your skill. Hone your skill until you get to the place where you say, I would love to pay myself for this. I'll pay myself more. <laughs> <laughs> right. Wow, 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 wow. Listen, when I started to pray about, you know, the topic that I wanted us to talk about, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I literally heard, why should Christians, you know, participate or practice because we are saying that hey if you are called to coaching you should practice it but also we are saying that you should invest in coaching and I'm like Lord I don't know if that fit the talk show <laughs> <laughs> like I want to talk about some of those deep topics you know? <laughs> but it, I'm so grateful that you know I listen to the Holy Spirit and because I really appreciate this conversation mm-hmm. I appreciate this conversation because I do believe I tell people the motto for the Christian Coaches Alliance was because the world needs more Christian life coaches. The only way that you can attack or counteract darkness is by being light. Mm-hmm. So many Christians think that the way to deal with darkness is to be evil to each other. Mm-hmm. They think that it's, it's, it, they should be harsh to each other and judgmental to mm-hmm. each other. So they're using darkness to try to attack darkness and that makes no sense. The way we attack darkness is to be light. So how am I being light? It means that I'm, like Brittany says, I am dealing with the confidence and saying, God has first and foremost called me and equipped me for such a time as this. Secondly, I'm gaining and keeping his promises in the heart that once he says it, it is so. And I'm also paying back in on what she said, that, hey, the truth is that God has an amazing plan for your life, but the, he uses people. That's what coaching is about. Just utilizing the resources. Now, do you, again, have to invest in our coach to be the best that God has called you to be? No. God is God and he can do it all by himself. But he also made it very clear that we are vessels. Mm -hmm. We're vessels of honor for him. And he wants to use us as Christian life coaches to go there and cause a chain reaction of amazing blessing to help others to tap into their potential. And that's really what we have for you this week. So I allow Brittany to tell you how you can find her. She's a confidence coach. She actually came to Jamaica, <laughs> right, to attend my event in June, June 30th, the Reach Millions event. And listen, I'm so grateful. Like, can you believe? Like, I, I personally have clients coming from all over the world to come and be coached by me. You know tell me, Mr. Jesus, not real? Lie, you know tell. So, <laughs> tell them a little bit about you and how they can find you. Yes. So, you can find me at www.beyondnowcoaching.com. So, it's beyond, B-E-Y-O-N-D, now, N-O-W, coaching.com. Ah, uh, listen. And she's on Instagram. She's on Facebook. So, go and definitely check out, you know, the confidence coaching is and again, there's coaches for every aspect of your life. So I would say before you choose a coach, of course, pray, discern, do your research, right? Not saying you should just throw your money to everybody, right? But I do believe that God is calling us, more of us, to be light in this, in this time. So that is it for this week. I pray that somebody, something I said would have blessed you. I pray that you will just continue to believe that God wants to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask, think, or imagine. And as we close off, remember, we have the three featured books that will be there. Go and check out the featured books. Support the authors. Support the kingdom authors. And again, just tune in for another amazing episode of the Daylight Show at MTM TV. We thank you. See you next week.